Hello, hello, hello everybody. We are on two channels. Uh, this evening we are to my right and to my left. I have uh, two cameras. Thank God the light is better, I think. And we're all exciting uh, to share with you some information that might be found you um, um, very helpful. And the purpose again for uh, doing it is to share knowledge and information that can be find us using that and make this week the best week that it can be for us. Now we know that we have 50, 52 weeks a year and every week is have a different energy. Uh, this week energy has to do a lot with overcoming enemy and overcoming um, some troubles or some issues that we have in our life. Now think about it, when we say enemy, uh, we can look at the enemy as something from within and we look at the enemy as something that is out there. Now of course we're scared of the enemy out there way more than we're afraid of the enemy inside. But we know that King David in the book of Psalms say, I will say it first in Hebrew with your permission, Shmoroti me'ohavai, Please keep me for my lover, because for my enemy, I will know how to distance myself on my own. Now, what does that mean, keep me away from my lover? Many times, the inner enemy, it's something that we love very much. For example, addiction to food, addiction to control, addiction to become important, addiction to become famous. That could be something that not could be, for sure, something that we like. People tell us how great we are, and we follow it. But that type of lover could be way more dangerous than the person who's causing you some type of chaos in your life. Many times in your place of work, or with your health, or with your relationship, you will find yourself getting into a place that you get so angry. People that insult you, didn't treat you right. But think about it. Without those people who bother you in your life, you will never be able to move on to the next journey. So how thankful you are for the external people or the external problems that we have. Now this week, we would like to overcome whatever enemy that we have in our life. Physical enemy or internal, external, internal. How do we go about it? So there is a section in the Bible, I'm sure you're all familiar with that section, is a section that between Jacob, the famous Jacob, the son of Isaac, and the other son of Isaac, the twin brother, named Esau. Esau would like to kill his brother, like in old tradition, in this tradition is going on for 3,000 years, that brother want to kill the brother, Cain want to kill Abel, and then in Rome, in the empire, if you've been ever in Rome, there is that famous story of the two brothers who want to kill each other. And now, the other two brothers want to kill each other. Very difficult, actually, for two brothers to live in peace. It's almost impossible. Why? Because normally, two brothers, according to Rabbi Isaac Luria, according to the gate of reincarnation, those of you who study reincarnation, you have three types of people in your life. The one you love, the one you hate, and the one you get jealous from. Jealousy and hatred, not the same thing. Hatred can go away. Jealousy can stay there forever. If you're jealous from someone, you're stuck. You're stuck for 20 years. If you hate someone, you get tired of hating him. Because you have to go see a movie, you have to go do, deal with your life. How can I get rid of the enemy from within and the enemy out there. Do you want to know? I think you do. I think you know. I think you do. And very, thank you for everybody who just joined here. And everybody who joined here. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining. So what do you think? How do you get rid of your enemy without killing them? Or I should ask, how do you turn your enemy into your friend, into your lover, into somebody that want to be with you and start to see the good in you. 
What do you think? What do we do about it? Do you want to know? You know, freeze. Don't worry. I'm still here. I just let you time to think. Let you time to, th to build your desire. Let you time to slowly, slowly thinking, who is my enemy? Do I want to get rid of them? Susan say, of course. And please share. How can I get rid of my enemy? We must go back to the story, the original story of the Bible, of what Jacob is doing. And if we will repeat this week everything that Jacob is doing, we will have a very good chance to get rid of our enemy, external, internal. Okay? So let's start talking about it. First aspect of what Jacob is doing is sending Malachim, which are called angels, into his enemy, his killer, Esau. That's what he's doing, first. Angels, can we send angels? Of course we can send angels, but we can do even better. We can send messenger. With our mind, we send messenger to your enemy and say to your enemy, enemy, I don't want you to be my enemy and I don't want to be your enemy. That's what we do this week. I'm sending you positive energy. I'm sending you energy of peace. I'm sending you energy of love. I'm sending you energy of unity. That's first. Second thing is we set up for that meeting. Very important to be excited about meeting your enemy. The question is why? Nobody likes to meet their enemy. The one place you meet your enemy is usually at court. You get a good lawyer, they get a good lawyer, and let the fight begin. It's a stupid fight. The lawyers make money and everybody else loses. Why do we need that even? Unfortunately, most people are so afraid to confront their issue that they're paying way more for that what they're not willing to confront. First, send the messenger with your mind. Second level now. Set up for the meeting. How do you set up for the meeting? Is it the chair? Is it the table? Lawyer? What do you do? Very simple. You are sending energy. It could be even a physical gift. It can be a letter. It can be email, text, Twitter, whatever you like. Send something. Then come the third part. The meeting itself. And that's, my dear friend, is the catch of the entire thing. The meeting itself is the most important thing. Why? Because in the meeting, as you get approach to the person, it must known to us that we need to lower ourselves, lower our ego. When we lower our ego and lower ourselves, something magical will take a place. Listen to that, my friend. When you lower yourself, what happened? At that moment when you lower yourself, all the blessing can be poured to you. When you try to climb and be above everybody else, nothing can come into you. So the secret of everything is to lower myself so the blessing will come to me. What happened to my enemy when I lower myself? What exactly take a place when I low myself, they all of a sudden want to like me, want to love me, want to be there for me. Not because they like me, not because they love me. The laws of spirituality say when you lower yourself, a person automatically wants to like you. And this is the secret of everything in the spiritual journey that many people think that the lower the ego is to beat yourself up. Not true. Don't beat yourself up. The opposite. Get excited. 
I'm so low. I'm the one who's going to get everything. But the one who want to be high, nothing come to you. Remember, the high mountain, the high mountain will not keep the rain, will not keep the snow. Everything will melt down and go down to the valley. The valley will always get everything. The valley will hold all that rain and water that exists. Is this unbelievable? Think about it. Do you want to be the valley or do you want to be the mountain? Everybody want to be the mountain. Everybody want to be so important. But in the end of the day, the mountain get nothing because everything will melt down. The valley will get everything. Be the valley this week if you want to win your enemy. Your enemy is there to help you to overcome it. And if you want to overcome it, remember, be the valley. Three levels. Again, I would like to repeat. Send a messenger. Write a message. And then get into a place where you can actually lower yourself. And through that, you can fix whatever go wrong in your life. Let me now go to another, another level. We know that we are um, in December, a great month, month of Sagittarius, but we know Mercury is in retrograde. Those of you who study astrology, and uh, it's getting into retrograde, I think, this Thursday. Christmas, Hanukkah, celebration, love, gift. You're expecting to get a bigger gift. You get a small gift. But when you open, you're happy because it's a ring. You get a big gift. You open and it's nothing. So everybody with expectation in this time of the year to get gift and to get appreciated. Everybody want, how can I get more appreciated? Please appreciate me. Please love me. Please give me. Remember, as high as we're going to be, less we will enjoy life. So the ego itself is not about manners of making myself small. Poor me. I have a hole in my pants right now. No, not me. It's part of the talk. I have a hole in my pants. Please have some mercy on me. No, that's not the goal. The goal of being humble is to have the strongest desire of the person. When a person is humble, he's capable at that moment to receive everything. When a person is have ego, he can get. It can get when you are the mountain. There is no place to put it. But when you lower yourself as low as you can get, absolutely. So whatever Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever holiday that's coming in two weeks, get prepared. You want to get the biggest gift in this time. What do you do? I'm going to lower myself. I'm going to make myself smaller. And then the journey begins. And the lovely things begin. Some people sometimes ask me, when I give lecture in groups, different places in the world, they ask me the same question. What... If during the holiday I lower myself, but people take advantage of it. Everybody asks me that. Wherever I travel in my life, people ask me the same question. China, New York, Florida, everywhere, same question. What if I lower myself and lower my ego and nobody know about it and they take advantage of me? My dear friend, there is something called divine. God, the light, the force. Right now we have that movie, Star Wars. The force will be with you. The force, the energy, whatever you want to name it. What about that force? Is that force went to vacation to Cancun? Is that force don't know what you're doing? If you actually willing to lower yourself, you activated the all the energy of this universe and the wonderful things start to come down. So if you look around you and you want some approval for some little creature, little, little creature that one day here, one day it's not, which we call them, by the way, human being, if that's what you're looking for, then you're a mountain. What is a human being doing with a mountain? Two things. Looking at it, take picture, right? And climbing on it. You will want to be the valley where everything comes to you, where all the energy comes to you, where all the beauty comes to you. This is the second thing in this week. Third thing I would like to share. The energy of this week is to do something. We're supposed to do something. 
What is that we're supposed to do? In life, there is two things, my dear friend. One thing is called to do positive thing. And second is preventing ourselves from doing negative thing. How do you know which part of your negative thing you shouldn't be doing? I'm almost going to answer it, but then I decide, no, don't answer it. Because you know. You actually know exactly what type of negative thing you shouldn't be doing. Think about it now. I want you to, I want you to, to go deep into that. Because this week is miracle week. Once in this week, you're capable, specifically in the noon time. Remember, in the noon time. I will tell you exactly when. It's between 12, okay, till 6.30 p.m. You're capable to watch yourself and don't do negative things. I know it's many hours. Usually I give you five minutes. Today we're pushing it. We're pushing it for miracle. We can make miracle this week. All of us. From 12 to 5.30, even 6 p.m. We are pushing ourselves not to feed the energy of negativity. Meaning, don't steal, don't kill, I don't need to tell you, right? Don't get angry, don't be too meticulous, especially on your husband, your wife, friend, people who live with your partner. That's preventing the negative. What is this benefit you? I will tell you what is benefit you. Zero. So why should I do it? I tell you why you should do it. If you're not preventing yourself from acting in a negative way, and you do act in a negative way, and you will act negative way, that negative action that you are doing is going to the bank of your little demon, and you make your demon a little bit stronger. So when your mind needs to think clearly, this will go against you. So you're not adding anything to yourself, but you are preventing yourself from a negative advisor, which I think it's getting. But it's mostly... Preventing. Now, there is a second part about doing this week between uh, the morning, again, when you wake up, till 12. If you want to do it, guys, this is the work of miracle we're talking about. And when we do that part of positive action between morning till afternoon, you adding a lot to your soul, to yourself, to your family, and everybody around you. So when you prevent yourself from doing something negative, you just prevent from the dark side not to go crazy with your brain. When you do positive thing, you are adding to yourself so much more. So everybody is now telling me, okay, Leo, so it's better to do some positive thing, and that's it. Why should I be thinking all day long how to prevent negative things? I tell you why. The reason people are doing something positive is because a minute before that, they were able to prevent from themselves from doing something negative. If you, somebody called me uh, last week from Florida, and he, for the last 11 years, he decided to eat healthy. And a thought come to his mind that maybe it's time to forget about healthy and just go for it. And when he called me, he said, wow, I'm so ashamed of myself that this thought came to my mind. And I answered, I'm so proud of you that that thought came into your mind. He said, what do you mean? I said, did you go for that food that you want? He said, no, I didn't. I said, great. Every time a negative thought comes to your mind and you are able to prevent yourself from doing it, you are actually preventing that negative demon to come into your mind. So the only reason to prevent myself from doing the negative thing is to prevent from that forces, specifically between noon to the evening, from that negative force to come into my mind. Every time you're doing something positive, that's the only time you actually benefit with light, with kindness, with happiness. You're going to have a smile into your face. Now, why is smile and happiness is so important to put it on your face? 
Because after all, if you think about it, if we be honest with each other here, who we belong to? Who are you belong to? Who am I belong to? You are watching me right now. I mean, my little pink, beautiful shirt, I mean, love that color. I'm not belong to me, I belong to you. What do I mean by that? Well, think about it. What you're watching now is not in my domain. You have me on your screen. Thousands of you will have it on my screen. All over the world will see it. Is it in my control? You're going to share it with thousands of your friends. It's going to be to 12,000 people. Think about it. Is it in my control? No longer in my control. So when I smile, is the smile belong to me? Think, please be with me for a second. If I'm kind, if I'm happy, if I tell you a joke, if I tell you a good story that motivates you, it's no longer belong to me. It's belong to you. So when a person is miserable face, what happened? At that time, he hurt. He destroyed part of this universe. This morning, as I'm going to do my meditation, my prayer, one of my oldest friends who I know for 28 years put his hand on my shoulder and said, Eliyahu, Eliyahu. I said, yes, what do you need? I was like, please, we just started in the morning. Some people are good in the morning. Like my wife, I'm, my engine stopped three hours later. So he looked at me and said to me, well, you look better when you smile. Of course it bothered me. I don't like people telling me what to do. What look better, what don't look better, just leave me alone, right? So I'm holding that little demon that was about to be released and I'm holding it, hey, sit down, sit down for a second. And I think it to myself, that's true. That's true. I look scary when I don't smile. Mm. Smiling, I look welcome. My smile not belong to me. So how do I keep a smile on my face? How do I keep this happiness on my face? You stressful job, you go there, bankers, right? Or people who sit in the office with accounting and the stock and doctors and surgeons and whoever going to listen to it. We have stress during the day. Can't smile all the time. I look stupid if I smile all day long. It's supposed to look serious. You're going on a date. What are you going to do? Hi. Hi. You're going to look a little bit serious, right? Happiness is a result of doing good things. When I'm capable of doing positive things with my life, Right away, a smile comes on my face. It's a result. I would like to read to you something that I read from the book Daily Affirmation. True fulfillment comes not from getting what you don't have, but from appreciating what you already have. Say it Ten times every day. I repeat again. True fulfillment comes not from gaining what you don't have, but from appreciating what you already have. Say it, please. Ten times every day. I would like to wish you a wonderful week, a great week, a miracle week. And let me repeat what we talk about just fast. Okay? First, to overcome our enemy. You prepare yourself by sending something with your mind, messenger. Then write an email or text or something. Then go approach a person by humbling yourself. Okay? Do not forget these things. This week, between 12 to 6, we're preventing ourselves from doing something negative. Between 6 to 12, we are doing something which is more positive. I hope you're going to have a miracle week. I love you so much. And I appreciate you come and watching it. Please. Spread this message. I would like this message to get to 12,000 people. Okay? If you have friends in China, in India, in Syria, in Dubai, in every place in the world, we need to get to the Far East to spread this message as far as you can. Thank you, and I love you.